Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Physique Development Podcast. Before we get started, we would absolutely love if you could go ahead and give this a thumbs up and leave a comment if you're on YouTube watching this and go ahead and hit that subscribe button, or go ahead and give us a review if you are listening to this on your preferred podcast platform. That would be incredibly helpful for us, and we would very much so appreciate it. But today we have a very special guest. It is one of Alex and I's favorite people. It is Miguel. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. This is the magic behind the camera, so he's not in front of it a ton. But uh, Miguel, as you have heard us mention, especially if you're a regular podcast listener um, or just, you know, follow us on Instagram, you know that uh, Miguel is our videographer. He's actually the creative director for Physique Development, and he has been a godsend and <laughs> a miracle all wrapped into one. Uh, he's been absolutely incredible. I truly do mean it when I say that he's one of Alex and I's favorite people. And we are going to be doing a podcast of the three of us talking about just kind of what this year has been because it's been a wild ride. <laughs> wow. Yes. We've just been going for it and it's been great. Um, truthfully, don't know if we could have done every Well, I know for sure. <laughs> I, not that I don't know. I know for sure we could not have done what we have done this year without Miguel. So thank you, Miguel, for being the best. But before we get into what this year is, let's get into what every year before that has been. Because we like to say Miguel has lived multiple lives. Sometimes <laughs> I just hear something Miguel says, and I'm like, I didn't even know that was part of your life. And it's just so off the wall sometimes, I feel like, where it's just how many lives have you lived? So we're going to find out about the lives that Miguel has lived, <laughs> and we are just going to learn a little bit more about him. We've done coach spotlight episodes for you guys to get to know the coaches and the staff of physique development. So we want to definitely include Miguel in that. That was a great introduction. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> you're about to like have that as like your ringtone. You'll just be like, Miguel is the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and dig into things. So let's go b way back and let's talk about life before this life and what that's all looked <laughs> before like Before PD? You. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think one place I always start off with was or is my music background. So, and I think that translates to video editing. It's such an important piece because you just timing everything up and it's, there's such a, a creative input with all of it. So um, as a teenager, I I consider myself a musician still, but as a teenager, I was heavily into music. And um, yeah, high school, I got into, I got into playing in bands. And, you know, there's like, there's like a lot of teenage angst <laughs> when you're in high school. So <laughs> that was my creative outlet. Um, I played in, it was metalcore, so it's heavy music. Mm -hmm. um, what I listen to every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely on the gym playlist. Play some metalcore. You'll get the greatest workout. Um, but metalcore for me was uh, the, the majority of like my outlet. So I started playing guitar and uh, immediately like a couple years into learning guitar, got into playing bands. And my first band was in high school. And it was, just, we played local shows and stuff, but it was just like me and my, you met Julio. Julio mm -hmm. was our bass player. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So it was like, we, it was just like a cool bonding experience, just getting through high school, being a rebel, just, you know, doing the thing, right? So wow. first, I love that so much because now I love your and Julio's relationship yeah. even more. <laughs> I already loved it. And also Julio is a really cool guy, has yeah. like such unique life experience and is still having like, yeah. obviously just like Miguel still having life experience. But that makes me like really happy. One day, <laughs> one day I'm going to film a movie or a documentary about Julio's life and tell his story because it is, he yeah, somebody who's lived multiple lives, but has just gone and done amazing things, mm -hmm. amazing things. And he's just like, he's an incredible artist for people that don't know Julio Labra. Shout out to Julio Labra. <laughs> he's been my best friend since we, uh, since I knew what friendship really meant. Wow. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's my boy. So like, he's an amazing artist. And by artist, I mean, he actually like paints and draws and sells paintings and has traveled the world doing it. So uh, he's currently in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, as a professor at SCAD University. So uh, he's continuing to push the boundaries and do mm -hmm. things there. So I, you know, with Julio being my best friend, um, we formed a band and 
that was like my high school career. Mm -hmm. um, Who is the singer? Was there a singer? Is there vocals? Yeah, well, vocals. metal, I guess. There's yeah. like screaming. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> it was me that did. I play guitar and I did vocals. Guys, Miguel <laughs> can do vocals. This is such great information. So, it wasn't good. It was not. It was I think not we good. need to insert clip here. <laughs> Uh, I won't put you, uh, you know, too much pressure, but I would personally like to see it. So insert clip to my inbox, please. I'll, I'll have to show you guys. Maybe not high school band that whole, but it, the the music career afterwards, yes. definitely. Like we have uh, a YouTube channel and like things are still popping off there. Um, but after after the high school band ended, everybody went to college and started living their own lives, you know, and I continued just to play music. I went to school. I went to school for, first it was for music, mm -hmm. so it was audio engineering and, and music theory. But then I switched to architecture, so I have my associates in architecture. <laughs> See, I'm <laughs> learning new things about Fergus Miguel every day. Random. <laughs> um, so but how I, do you feel about archi architecture now? Like, what? I mean, I love homes. You know, I think, I think we share interests in, yes. like, you know, liking beautiful houses. Um, but I don't know. It's like, you know, I, I, it's funny because the, all the construction on the, the property, the mm -hmm. development happening around here with houses going up. Like I love watching that because mm -hmm. it's such a cool process where people just like break ground. And, like It's build. nothing. And then it's a house. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's yeah. But throughout like my, my, I don't know anything about architecture <laughs> that degree. That's all long gone. But I went, I changed my degree, um, because I was working. So throughout high school, and then college, I worked at a land surveying company, and then I went off to a civil engineering company. And it was kind of in that field, like I have experience using AutoCAD and Revit and just like these 3D development softwares. Mm -hmm. So I opted to do something similar to the job that I was already working, mm -hmm. if that yeah, I don't know. I was trying to figure out how to be an adult. Right? Yes, like, very <laughs> valid. I mean, I really don't like... I can't expect 18 year old me yeah. to like really make a decision on life. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I had no idea like what was coming my way, what to expect, like what life even was. <laughs> and so when I think about like, oh, I want to be this, it's like I didn't even know what it meant to be this. Yep. Um, as far as like any job you would enter of like, I want to be a doctor, I want to be an architect, I want to be a musician. Like, I had no actual context of like what that meant. Yeah. And so 18, I can't expect yeah. anyone to really nail that down. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. Like that's, I remember going, you know, like high school, college counselors, and you're just like, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? And that's such a hard decision to make at that point in your life. Cause it changes all the time for mm -hmm. a lot of people. If you find that passion, that bliss early on and like you go for it, like success is, you know, plentiful, but you know, for a lot of us, we still figure it out. And we adapt and we grow and things change. The world changes. Like new jobs are being invented all the time. Yeah. And you change. Like you figure yourself out. Yeah. And so it's like you can get more in tune with what you want out of life or what your preferred like structure of life was. Like that was a big thing for me in college is I went to college and my degree is in broadcast journalism. And I still use so many of those skills within what I do now, which is really great for the carryover. But I realized I didn't want to have the schedule of getting up at like 2 a.m and going into the studio at like 3 a.m. And when they started to talk about what your schedule was going to be like, I very, very quickly after that decided that's not how I want my life to go. Yeah. And then that's kind of how I decided what to do next was how do I want my life to look? And then what steps can I do to get to that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You start asking the bigger questions, the deeper questions. And yeah, I, I mean, luckily for me, I, there were office jobs, but I'm thankful that those jobs. So the first one was Bob Isgrig and Associates, which was a land surveying company in Jeffersonville, Indiana. I worked under Bob for three to four years, I think. And that was cool because I was still in high school. I was a junior and senior. I went to this vocational school called Prosser and they allow you to work half the day. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, so I was making a little money on the side, playing music and learning at this new job. Living the dream. Yeah, I mean, I high felt, school. <laughs> I felt accomplished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm working, I'm I making good too. money. <laughs> um, afterwards, uh, I think I had a couple of like m jobs along the way that before I got to CNI engineering, chemical and industrial engineering was the job that 
it was my corporate cubicle job that I was there for like six years. And before that, I would, I think before I found CNI and I applied and got that job, I, I had done anything and everything to just make money because I was still playing music. I still had to fund my passion. So I, I remember <laughs> I worked at a pickle factory. For a bit. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I worked at a pickle factory. Um, it was just like a random oddball job that my, my buddy was like, Hey, I, I need workers. Like we're paying cash, whatever, whatever. So as like as that young hustler, I was like, sure, I'll do it. So I'd come home every single day, <laughs> smell like smell a jar like pickles. pickles. <laughs> so I'll do that every once in a blue moon. Um, I worked at this company called Silicron, which was like a, a it was factory work. Mm -hmm. That's how I got this nasty scar in my hand. Actually, it's oh, a really? it's a keloid scar. Yeah, my hand got caught in a CNC machine that I was operating, and luckily. I was wearing a glove, even though they weren't supposed to wear gloves. It got caught, but it was I was able to pull it my hand free because of that. Oh um, my gosh! First, what kind of machine is that? Uh, I don't know what CNC necessarily stands for. I, I did at one point, but it's just like it was me and this other guy named Bryce in this gigantic glass fish tank type of room because it was all it was. We were dealing with chemicals. I they they interviewed me for a drafting position because I had experience in that department, but they stuck me on the assembly line with this other guy because I was smart enough to run the machines, which is just like, there's a computer screen, you enter the numbers, you dial it in, you grab this big chunk of metal and it does the work for you, it shaves it down. We were making cylinders, like printing press cylinders. Mm. So like Coca-Cola and like vitamin water, you print Sponsor it on a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting on that vitamin water. <laughs> we do that and it was, it was awful. It was such that a doesn't suck, sound fun. oh man. Could not, I mean, I had to be, I had to be there at like 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And I imagine like you see my schedule now. Yeah. <laughs> I do not. Not a 5 a.m. <laughs> not a 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. type of guy. But, you know, I, I did that for a while until this happened the day, I think it was the day before, the day of Thanksgiving. And once this happened, I like took a look around. I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, this is just not, it's not worth the, uh, my body was beat up and like I was standing on your feet all day and like. I know a lot of people do that. It's not for me. Yeah, steel toe same. boots. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was throbbing, um, but I did what I had to do to make money. Eventually, got the job at CNI Engineering. So, what made you apply for that job? Um, I think it was just a a safe like corporate job. I I I, I can't remember if I was recommended. Or if I had my resume out and they reached out. It's, was this directly after college that you went to the yeah, C, C, C and I? Yeah. C and I. Yeah. Yeah, directly after college. And that was a great, like, the point of I was trying to make was I I worked in, like, these jobs, even though they're office jobs, they're amazing. Because, like, we, once my next band, O Kingdom, which was the more successful project that I did a lot of, I spent a lot of time in, uh, once that project took, took off, my jobs would allow me to go on tour and like you like borrow PTO from the next year. We, they were very flexible. Oh, that's awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. It was it was like exactly what I needed. So I stuck around for them as long as as long as I mentally could, you know. Mm -hmm. But um yeah, so O Kingdom was the next band that I would say gave me the greatest memories and of my life and it was just so much fun to be yeah, we we experienced a lot. Mm -hmm. We we toured for three or four years, uh, put out three records. Crazy. Um, See, we, so cool, guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it was so much fun, man. I I saw so much of the U.S. that I just never thought I'd I'd yeah. see playing music, and you know it was rough. Like you're sleeping in a van oh, most of the time. Sure. <laughs> you're like taking showers in Walmart bathrooms. We went. We toured up to. As far north as Buffalo, New York, as far south as Austin, Texas, or even further south than that, San Antonio maybe, and as far west as like Minneapolis, Minnesota. So we never made it out to California, but yeah, everything in between. And we do these like, you know, two week long, week long tours, weekend warrior tours that were just so much fun. Yeah. And you're just like so hanging out memories. with your, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hanging out with your best friends, you're playing music, you're playing shows, you're yeah, we we lived the dream. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with that, for um, when you were working at CNI, how soon after you started there did you start O Kingdom? That those were kind of like overlapping. Yeah, I think the first 
few years of CNI was I, I didn't officially like plan the band or I think I found them and I auditioned and the relationship happened. And then years and years later, we got established and started touring, bought a van, put out records, all that stuff. So, so was it something that like you knew everyone or you had said auditions of you just saw it and then yeah. you went on to the audition? Yeah. So it's funny. They, they were originally located in Radcliffe or E-Town, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's 45 minutes south of Louisville. Mm -hmm. So and I'm, I was living at my mom's house, which is in Southern Indiana, Charlestown. Mm -hmm. So I'm driving an hour 15, an hour 30 to get to rehearsals and practice mm -hmm. and like do that two times a week to, you know, join this band and show that I'm committed. So I did that for a while until we found a new practice space and we centralized everything and, mm -hmm. you know, made some changes. But yeah, but was... you've always been down for a drive. So. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that road trips. I love some road trips. I do like road trips. He's like, I'll commute. That's fine. What's a few more hours in my car. Meanwhile, Alex and I are like, oh my gosh, <laughs> more time in the car. <laughs> I mean, that's what it was. I mean, you, when you're on tour, you'd wake up in new cities. Mm -hmm. You're, you're pulling the night shift and driving, you know, eight hours through the night. You're, you're just doing what you can to get there and, and be safe, of course. But like, like I said, we spent so much time together in the van and mm -hmm. like had so much fun. So like really like road trips, driving, seeing new places. I've, I've, since I've been a kid, that's all I've really wanted to do is like see as much of the world as I possibly can. So mm -hmm. it's like, as long as we're getting there, we're having a good time. Like that sounds amazing to me. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah. What would you say is like either your favorite like concert that you played or favorite place that you went, whether it's due to like you really love that place or like the memories that were made there? Oh, man. I know that's a pretty hard question. You don't have to choose your all-time favorite because that's, you know, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> we did have, I mean, great shows that I remember like we crushed. We played – I i matter festival in new york we had a fantastic crowd we won that spot at this festival we drove up to new york originally and competed in this like battle or whatever mm -hmm. they're just looking for an opening band for the festival and we crushed it so we came back and had an amazing crowd and that's awesome those types of shows are like when you just like don't really expect anything you just like show up and have a great time those always lend themselves to be amazing um Austin, Texas was like the first one that came to mind. We played on 6th Street. It was around the time of, uh, I forget the name of like the big festival that happens down there. Not ACL, but there's there's mm -hmm. a time where like 6th Street's popping. Everybody's like playing at bars. And um, I remember we started our set and there was maybe like two or three people in the crowd. Literally, like everybody scattered around the bar. Nobody's paying attention. And by like song two... People were flocking in from the streets, like watching us through the window. Like by the end of our set, we had an encore in a full room. It was that crazy. Is awesome. It was so I much can't fun. imagine what that feeling is oh, of like was... an encore and like <laughs> a full like that's incredible. That's yeah. such a crazy feeling and memory, I feel like. Oh yeah. I mean, there's like there's some like that 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 stick in my mind. And like, even like conversations that happen. I remember meeting these two Australian guys. They came up to me after the show. Like they gave me praise, gave me love. They were from Australia and just hanging out in Austin, Texas. And they were just like stoked to meet me and stoked to like that we that we crushed it. And like little conversations like that where like, yeah, just like certain people, it's random. Cause like a lot of this stuff is you're not sleeping. You're in a, you know, you're, you're day to day, like you're exhausted and your body's all beat up from playing a show before. So a lot of it just gets kind of lost in the mix. But those two, those two stood out. We also had one night, which is funny. This was actually in Ohio. Mm -hmm. We had one night. We we were playing this. It was like um, an Indian reservation mm -hmm. in Ohio somewhere. I don't know who booked this show, but we were, it was a stop on our tour. And we played with a band, several bands from Ohio. One was called Visionaries. Um, the others, I care, Left to the Wolves or Strangers to Wolves. Ohio bands that we had mm -hmm. met um, 
previous shows and stuff. But we had this, we had this festival type of show booked at an Indian reservation and we get there early. All the bands are there. It's like four or five, 15 passenger vans. Like we're all hanging out. It's a beautiful day, but we get out and start meeting the promoters and, and like asking questions and it seems sketchy. Mm -hmm. And then there was like actual native Americans that were living there as well on this reservation that were not happy that this show and these people oh, were showing up and they gave us that vibe. Oh. We were just like, this, you know, it just felt awkward. So it's hours are passing. We're just kind of like, what do we do? Is this going to happen? Nobody's showing up. Like, uh, so all the bands came to an agreement to just bail on the show in general. So we all left. Oh my. And I don't know how this happened, but there was this girl named Molly. Shout out to Molly. <laughs> She was a friend of one of the bands that was on the tour and she lived in Ohio. She threw a house show slash party for us. And it was crazy. Her mom and dad were there. They had pizzas all for the bands. Like everybody's, everything's laid out. They fed us. And imagine like a neighborhood like this, you have four or five vans and trailers parked oh out my front. Gosh. We all loaded up in her basement, which is a big ass basement. Uh -huh. And we just played a killer rock show and we all partied and had a great time. So That's it was insane. <laughs> That's so fun. It's like, let's not invade this Indian, <laughs> Indian reservation. Let's just all party together. It was, it was beautiful. So cool. It was yeah, beautiful. Shout out to Molly. Shout out to Molly for pulling that together. Her parents were awesome. <laughs> the fact that like, you know, we're shaking their house, you know, yeah. and they're just like, they're like, cool. <laughs> they're like, let's go. Uh, so with that, was this also heavy metal or yeah. what was? Okay. Oh, Kingdom? Oh yeah. Oh, Kingdom is metal core. Okay. So metal core is like metal hardcore collab. And it's like, it's heavy breakdowns, it's heavy guitar ricks, but there's also singing involved. So okay. in O Kingdom, I did vocals, but I sang, I didn't scream. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so, it's a lot easier for me to you know actually perform and do and and um, yeah, like. So would you say that there's a big distinction between like heavy metal and metal core? Yeah, yeah, okay. I think so. If I think of heavy metal, like just that term, I, I guess I don't know if I'm old school or not, but I think of like, Metallica okay. and like, you know, Megadeth and bands in that era of music. Metalcore is definitely something that was uh, a new wave of music mm -hmm. that has kind of reemerged. And it was like a combination of different, like hardcore music and metalcore music are completely different. Yeah. Even though like from somebody who's listening, they, they're like, oh, it all sounds the same. It's all screaming and like heavy. But when you're in the genre, it's like they're completely different sounds and different, different chord progressions and different patterns and yeah we should do like you play clips for us and you'll be like what type of music <laughs> is this is this edm be like nah, i don't know anything <laughs> yeah so with with o kingdom metalcore uh like i said three records and we had a lot of fun and success off those albums a lot of memories a lot of like crazy antics and shows but that that to me was like a, a big defining mm -hmm. moment or time in my young adult life. Cause like, you know, you just learn a lot. You learn how to work with people. Yes. <laughs> you know, you, yes, very you, much. You put yourself in a position where you're uncomfortable all the time. You're, you're dealing with, yeah, everything, everything that the, the earth has to offer you at that point. So. so how do you find, like, how did you find that they were holding auditions for, like, oh, wow. I, I just feel like maybe I'm just not plugged in to that. But, <laughs> like, I wouldn't even know where to start other than Google to be, like, yeah. where to find a metalcore band near me. I I think I think I had seen, because at that point in time, I, I, I had auditioned for O Kingdom, but I was auditioning for other bands. So I was just plugged into MySpace or Facebook, I imagine it was. I can't remember. Um, and just you know, asking questions, like a lot of the local scene in Louisville at the time, people were always like willing to help. Uh, our guitar player, Brian, uh, who was in O Kingdom, he honestly has so many like different talents and skills. He's He was incredible at Photoshop. He's a great photographer and videographer. He's actually the person that helped me get in, get started with really? my new career. Mm -hmm. Uh, so shout out to Brian. Shout We're out. We're doing a lot of shout outs. Shout out to Brian Judd. We love Judd. shout outs. Let's <laughs> shout out everyone. Shout out Brian Judd. So Brian yeah, Judd. Yeah, shout out Brian because you <laughs> gave us Miguel. So we love you. That dude, he's. So if he was guitar, what were you? Guitar as well. Okay. Two guitar just... players, one bass player. 
a vocalist and yeah, Cody. Okay, that's good. I just, yeah. you know, sometimes <laughs> there's only one of each. So wanted to make sure I wasn't missing something. <laughs> um, so Brian. Brian. So Brian is an incredible photographer. He he was a profound at Photoshop. I mean, before, like he just knew so many things about that creative space. And I loved that about him because he'd always make, he'd make our tour laminates, he'd make our flyers. He was just a wizard when it came to that. So we oh, looked- Oh, I bet that was so beneficial. <laughs> oh yeah. At that point in time, mm -hmm. when people see us on social, we look so much bigger. He would literally change, like if a promoter would put out a flyer for a show, he'd take that flyer edit the flyer so well, kingdom had a bigger name like literally bigger on the flyer reposition it like we were bigger mm -hmm. than what, what we actually were <laughs> no <laughs> so. i love that i mean it shows just how those different talents can yeah. benefit in the areas and just like you are so skillful in so many different ways and i feel like it does benefit us of having like those different skills that you can kind of oh, yeah. dip into oh yeah especially when like this is what people are seeing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like right in front and of their faces. It's not like it is now of like there's just Canva and you can kind of like create yeah. something. It's like he's doing like the actual side of it that's hard to yeah. do. Oh, yeah. And especially at that time. And to have somebody like in in the band, in the house, like he, Brian is the original member of O Kingdom. He's the person who started it all. So he, I think, I think I found it on social media. I think I just found it on Facebook and I auditioned for I sent him a message and I just like sent, I think I sent a video maybe. And I was like, I'm willing to drive. I'm willing to just like, you know, meet you guys and talk shop and see how it goes. And yeah, I showed up once and it was, <laughs> it was not like, it was just really us hanging out and like, here's how I can play. And, mm -hmm. and here's yeah. The, um, yeah, I just brought him some ideas and, and we just continued from there. Like I liked the project. I liked, they had great recordings. And at that time of, of the local music scene, having, having amazing audio, amazing recordings that don't sound like somebody just recorded in their bedroom. Mm -hmm. They they were, O Kingdom was a cut above all that. They had already started doing that. And our audio engineer, Micah Powers, shout out to Micah, he shout lives out. here in Columbus. So that's how I originally became familiar with the Columbus area because we recorded three, three albums and two of those were in Columbus. Mm -hmm. So I'd come up here all the time, North Broad Street, and just like get the get the Columbus vibe. And years later, here we here are. Here we are. <laughs> Columbus, Ohio. That's it. <laughs> uh, was Metalcore like, because that was the original band that you started as well with Julio. Was that always your favorite music? Or was that more of like the music you felt the most comfortable playing or had the best outlet for? Uh, because you listen to all different kinds of music now. Yeah. I just don't know if that's how you were before. If it was kind of like one tracks for a very long time i really only ever listened to country music mm. and now i don't listen to country <laughs> music and i have a different section but i'm honestly not that <laughs> widespread i have my section and yeah. that's about it the sue gaines vibes the vibes, the vibes <laughs> playlist what type of music you like you know just like vibes <laughs> very descriptive uh, i'd say yeah i gravitated towards metal i've always Gosh, I, I just got a flashback of my <laughs> my high school, like my room in my mom's house. Uh -huh. So like my bedroom, we converted our garage. They stuck me in the garage th in the converted bedroom because like I was the child that always made the most noise. Mm -hmm. I literally had a full drum set in there. I had oh a guitar gosh. amplifier. <laughs> I had like, I mean, my bed and then like my studio set up where I'd write music. So I was always being loud. I was always being, and then my walls my walls were like posters. you couldn't even see yeah, yeah. you couldn't even see <laughs> I the already wall knew. That, just, that fits that fits truly you couldn't even see the i like, feel like that's how your room would look now if you like yeah. what, like yep. you would love to still build like kind of a dungeon of just like posters yep. everywhere and kind of having a place yeah, just like, to this create is me yes <laughs> like, look at all this <laughs> that was that was it i um you couldn't see the wall. I would rip like pictures out of like my favorite magazines and guitar players and bands that I liked. And I've always gravitated towards metal. I I was good at playing metal. I can't say I'm good at it pl at playing it now. And even as like I said, I call myself a musician, but I I don't have the skills that I once had playing guitar because I just don't practice it yeah. as enough. But I've always like now I would I I much rather like take it back to the basics and learn like jazz or learn something like R&B chords or things mm -hmm. that are just like, you know, more native, easy to hear. You don't need like a shit little distortion to to really like get the point across. It doesn't have to be loud, but 
So that's that's kind of where I'm at now. Is like I smooth music, mm -hmm. um, just being being a good musician, being a good guitar player, understanding music theory. I'm that's what I'm dabbling in now. Was anyone else in your family into metal at all? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My little brother Xavier, shout out to Savi, <laughs> <laughs> shout Savi, out. and Jasmine too. I mean, I think my older brother never got into metal. He was he's definitely always been like R and B, like Beyonce, Destiny's Child like that type of genre. Um, so how did you get introduced to metal? I have, honestly, maybe Julio. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Probably Julio, actually. Probably, who knows? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think it just stumbled upon it. And I, 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 I just like the energy of it all. Like going to a show when mm -hmm. you, or playing a show or just being a part of like, when you're, you're on, you see a band that's just ripping it and you're, you just feel it. Like it's a, like especially in the gym too. Like mm -hmm. I, that's all I would train. I don't really listen to metal now when I train, but back then, oh, man, yeah. it was just like you're just like I said, you're like a, a teenager. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it makes like so much sense. So I, you, and Will Whitman like connect on the <laughs> level that you do. It just like makes sense, truthfully. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you two, not like separated at birth, but kind of like kindred <laughs> souls for like friendship oh, of yeah. like type of human. <laughs> yeah, he's a man. Shout out to Will. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to Will. He's incredible. He is so incredible. So <laughs> multi-skilled and talented. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. it's, I also feel like he's lived, when I hear something new about him, I'm like, huh. Like that no. also happened in your life. Like <laughs> I feel like my life's pretty boring. Like not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so did you ever go like full time if we're gonna phrase it that way with O kingdom or was it always overlapping when you're at cni and them giving you that flexibility yeah we never we never made it to like a full-time thing it was always like the hustle outside mm -hmm. of work i think there was a which i i definitely needed that because you know i you know, you're you're still trying to make life work there's always mm -hmm. needs like i've always been told, you know, I have a plan B and I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing to do because especially when to go all, all in on something, but I always had like a, a career outside of music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like you just like to work in general yeah. too. Like you yeah. like having the extra stuff to do yep. and you like also like the security of like, I don't want to bottom myself. I'm fine with bottoming myself as far as like how much I'm using my body yeah. <laughs> and like working a full day and then going and doing the crazy things. But like you'd much rather do that than feel like you're pushing and then like not even being able to like yeah. do anything. Like I feel like you like to work and you like to pour into things so much. Yeah. And I mean, the starving artist thing is like, it's not necessarily a motto that I, I don't want to live by that. Mm -hmm. Like I, I want to make money. I want to, I have a career. I want to be like just the man at what I'm doing. And you are the man. Thank you. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I, I, I love, I mean, the fact that I get to do this now, like if we're jumping ahead here, but like, it's just a combination of work ethic and creativity that just like, I love it. There's not, mm -hmm. there's not something that it's not like, sure. Like there are projects that you dread because you just have to get it done. It's not the funnest thing in the world, but I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. I came from what it's like to just really dislike something. CNI was an amazing job, but I was in a cubicle, you know, polo, polo on, just like, yes, yes, sir, no, ma'am, like, same jokes all the time. It was now you only just get to rehear stories all the <laughs> now time just you and Alex. from Alex and I telling you the same story <laughs> in separate times. But, and, you know, it's just like when you've gone through those, like, difficult jobs and the things that you don't enjoy, you thoroughly just don't enjoy them. Like it just, you appreciate what you have so much more. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I've always, I've always loved that. And it's, I, I, you know, work ethic, I guess is subjective. But like I've always prided myself that I at least have a good work ethic. Mm -hmm. Definitely get that from my mom. But then I'm around people like you guys and you see it and you're just like, oh shit, there's levels <laughs> and we got to get moving. <laughs> <laughs> There's levels. I was about to be like, yeah, Miguel has an incredible work <laughs> ethic. And he's out here trying to be like, you guys, level. There's levels to this. But I, I think I, back to the Brian Judd camera, like with O Kingdom, we would, we would go on tour and Brian would always film like just BTS stuff. We'd be in the van. He had, we, we just, there'd be funny vlogs if, mm -hmm. you know, put a title on them, right? 
So we would do these little vlog videos of us at practice, of us going on tour, of us playing shows, different antics. We'd make skits. We we did that way back when. And funny enough, like we had people come up to our shows and like recognize us from Sick Breakdown Johnny video, <laughs> which was a comedy skit that we did. Oh and they were just gosh. like, I love that video. So our funny videos were also like trending up too. That's which so is, fun. But Brian was the creative genius behind all that because he just, he's arguably one of the funniest people that I know. And I would love for you guys to meet him. Yeah, I would love that. He um he loaned me his like hand-me-down camera back in the day, which was like a Canon T2i. Mm-hmm. It was like a stock stock lens, like super old. It very you know you can't do much with it, but mm-hmm. that was the first little DSLR camera that I had, and I just helped along with filming. I started doing more for the band, like guitar covers and filming myself, and it just continued. Mm -hmm. to go from there. And um, yeah, after O Kingdom, I just kept doing it. Hey guys, if you're listening to this and learning a lot, I absolutely love to hear it, but maybe you feel like you can't apply it perfectly. No worries, we got an app for that. Go ahead and check the show notes or the description box and there will be a link to go and check out the Physique Development Training Club. This is an app that is going to give you exactly what you need to progress within training with three, four, and five day splits as well as home and gym options complete with a timer in there, videos to the training, and everything else you need to be successful. So I can't wait to hear how much you love it. What did you feel like pulled you to wanting to be able to do more of that video? Was it a medium that you always admired or it was more of like Brian was doing it and you're like, this is really cool to see this other side of being an artist or being a creative because Mm. throughout the whole multiple lives that you have lived, (laughs) like being a creative is at the core of a lot of that, of even if you are working a job that you don't care about, you're doing something creative on the side or you're pouring yourself into something that is creative. And so was it the lure of another creative style to dive into or what did that pool look like when it was happening? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think I've always enjoyed creating videos Mm -hmm. unbeknown to me. I, I would do it in high school I remember I had like a a, a Motorola, like Razor little mm-hmm. phone and like there's cool features where you could, if you'd film, you could hit record on the camera or on the phone and stop the recording, but continue where you left off mm-hmm. by just continuing and hit record again. So like I would do, I would, <laughs> I would do these like funny skits where I'd be a magician or I'd go around and knocking my friends out. I mm-hmm. kid you not. It'd be like, oh my gosh. I'd walk up to Julio, whoever it was, and I'd punch him in the face, hold the punch, and we'd act out the rest because I'd continue the recording. Yeah. And it'd just be like prank videos like that in yeah. high school. So I've, I like always did, <laughs> I always did like random shit like that. Um, so, but when I saw Brian take it to the next level, I think that was, again, back then, you have a guy who's like great at Photoshop, great at doing videos. And back then you look at that and you're just like, man, this is like all they they're well presented, like it's professional, like he's good at it. So I take I took a lot of inspiration from him to get better and just like how to edit and ask questions and and continued from there. But I, th- I definitely think I liked video mm-hmm. way back then, just as much as I did with music. I just didn't didn't go all in on it with with like I, how I did mm-hmm. music. It was just more of like a these are funny videos I'm gonna show my yeah. friends, you know? <laughs> I feel like you and Alex connect on a lot on that of just like your love for video itself mm-hmm. and being able to create videos. That's like something Alex has always loved. And even when we first met, like he was always carrying around his big camera. Oh, wow. And like we would go, I was looking through pictures the other day and there was pictures of us just like at lifetime of we would film something and then we would go home and record the audio and either do like a split screen or do like a voiceover because we couldn't record at the gym because of the music and people walking in and out and all that. So we didn't have like the lighting. We couldn't do all the stuff that we do now. And there were so many of just like his camera and we're taking all these pictures at the gym and then we're going home and uploading them or taking these videos and trying to put these edits together 
together and we have like no idea really what we're doing. Well, <laughs> kind of, but uh, I did have a, a lot of practice on Final Cut Pro and uh, Adobe Premiere, but yeah. at that time it wasn't my main focus. So yeah. I was like kind of getting back to it um, and creating that. So it's been cool to see you guys connect on that and just the quality and the care that you have for video and audio and photography and just like everything that we do is so appreciated because it's that attention to detail and it's that like love for figuring something out mm. and like being able to be like okay i figured it all out like this is the product or this is the final project yeah yeah i love the feeling of that that feeling of awe that that people experience mm -hmm. I, I love feeling it myself going to see a movie and just being so like enthralled by mm -hmm. it or listening to a song that gives you cold chills and it takes you somewhere watching a video that just like drops your jaw or makes you happy like i i also did wedding films like wedding videography as i got better with camera stuff so i get the camera from brian and i start i immediately start doing youtube i started vlogging i started recording myself at the gym as awkward as that felt i just got over that i and I just practiced. It was practiced and practiced and practiced until people started hiring me. Mm -hmm. You know, I got into wedding films and it was the same thing. That feeling of giving a couple their film and just getting flooded with emotion of just like how much they appreciate it, how much they love it. Like that is such a good feeling. Mm -hmm. And I just try to I try to replicate that and bring that into my life every every chance I get. Yeah. So even like the YouTube videos, right? It's just oh, like for sure. Like it's I love just knowing like, it, guys, we love this. It's so good. Like we killed it. Like this just, it's just a nice flood of dopamine. Yeah. It just feels good. And so, yeah, I mean, I, with, with the fitness space in general, like that's what's, that's what kind of started me was got into YouTube, started filming myself doing fitness vlogs and just, what I What got I loved, you into training? Cause you, were you doing that when you were younger or what did that uh, look like? Oh yeah. With exercising. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I played like played high school football i started getting to i always wanted to be in shape i think it came from my my nickname that my grandfather gave me is gordo mm -hmm. which is fat in mm -hmm. spanish <laughs> so. i knew that one before you said it i was really <laughs> proud of myself we sometimes you know practice spanish aka miguel practice spanish and i kind of try and remember what spanish is uh so i've always been I mean, I've been called fat my whole life. You know, it's not. It's not. Dude, this really endearing name is fat. <laughs> it's funny because, like, I'm now. I think I told you this before. I'm not the only gordo in the family. Mm -hmm. Like now, I have cousins that are all gordos, but uh, I was the first. <laughs> so it's just always been like a heavy set kid. I got picked on being younger and being chubby, and my mom called me husky and all that <laughs> stuff. And I just like I always knew that I wanted to be in shape, mm -hmm. and I like I prioritized it. It was never. It was never like, there was no second guessing it, mm -hmm. you know? I Once I got into the gym, started playing high school football, started working out, just never looked back. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean. When did you get into boxing then? Oh, uh, quarantine. Okay. Yeah, quarantine. I feel like, I guess I thought that you had been in it for longer, but I guess that matches up as far as when we would go and shoot and we went and shot at that one place that you did go and box at yeah yeah and i guess that does line up but it, i felt at the time that you had been doing it for so much longer yeah so. <laughs> area, area 502 yeah. yeah yeah it's a great gym yeah um, it's a very cool gym yeah i started boxing I, i've always liked martial arts too mm -hmm. and like i'm a fan of just sports and art in general and boxing mixed martial arts I took karate as a kid. My mm -hmm. mom, my mom signed us up for karate, and <laughs> it's still funny because like we, I don't know how long we'd went for. We had gone at the time because we ended up just leaving, not pulling. I don't know if she could afford it or not, but like I think it was my, I think it was both my brothers. I don't think my sister went, um, but I excelled at it. I just, I enjoyed it so much. I was always watching Sensei. I was always wondering what he's doing. How to do the katas, <laughs> and, and uh, we end up you know testing to get a new belt. I end up testing. He challenged me to test higher than my brothers. So my brothers got a white a white belt, two stripes. I ended up getting a yellow. Oh, I just, shoot. <laughs> so You're like, fuck with me. It was a big, it was a big flex. <laughs> but I you said, who's Gordo now? <laughs> mf <-er? laughs> Exactly what you said. <laughs> That's how I felt. <laughs> Rightfully so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I loved it. I, I've always liked 
And even now, like I like watching boxing. I love watching MMA fights. And I think it's just like crazy human potential. But with boxing, I I never, after after karate and everything, I never took another martial arts. I just like always was a fan. And then uh, on a video shoot, I had met my boxing coach, uh, Kenny, rest in peace. Um, I met, I hired him for a, a it was like a, I believe it was a apparel company hired me to do like a video shoot for launching their new clothing. So I had the idea of like bring in different people from different disciplines. So Judge Love is a bodybuilder. Shout out to Judge. Shout out. The man with the coolest name, Judge Love. Yes. Um, Judge ended up uh, working with me. So it was like a bodybuilder, a Muay Thai fighter, and then a boxer. And we shot this cool ad for Inner Warrior, I believe, Inner Warrior Apparel. Mm-hmm. And I met, I, th- I think I just found Kenny through Instagram because like, hey, baby. <laughs> I ju- <laughs> use the back inference, got myself in <laughs> he here. He sneaks in. He has to say hi to his homie. <laughs> um, yeah, I met Kenny and like, I loved his energy. Mm-hmm. Like he just like, he he killed it on camera. He was like, you could tell he was about his business, but he was always, he was so much fun to be around. So I knew he, I knew he was a boxing coach and that was our first time meeting. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I, I was hooked on him yeah. and I, I, I continued to like go to him and we trained for years and it was, I mean, with quarantine happening, like with COVID and everything, we were locked down and he opened his gym to two other people and himself and all we did for months and months and months was box, was box and run and lift repeat yoga because he was a yoga instructor too so that's awesome it was like exactly what i needed mm-hmm. a lot of people like I, it sucks because like, i understand like gyms were shut down and people don't have nothing to do and blah, blah blah but the boy was <laughs> but working I did. Okay. <laughs> we were working <laughs> we did too so we were like oh we're doing our thing <laughs> uh so when um you left c and i and then i'm assuming that's likely around the time that o kingdom kind of stopped or disbanded or i don't know the correct terminology broke up what something like that (laughs) um you were doing video stuff but did you have something else that you were doing or is it just picking up video like freelance here and there Mm. yeah i think after after c and i and after o kingdom disbanded i just went i went in all all in on freelancing and and I remember, I'll never forget the day I walked into my my boss's office and told him I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. You know, like six years in the making of, I, I would walk into that place, see the sign and just tell myself, one day I'm gonna leave this company and I'm gonna do my own thing. I would say it all the time. And you still say it today. No, I'm just <laughs> no, no, no. no, every day he's like, I love this company. I'm gonna be a part of it forever. I love this shit. <laughs> But yeah, I was a glass doors, glass double doors. I'd see the sign and, and like, it wasn't like, this wasn't a bad job. It was mm-hmm. a great job. Super thankful that they stuck with me as well. But I knew it wasn't for me. And what year was that? I couldn't even tell you, to be honest okay. with you. Yeah, it's <laughs> sometime in the past. Hi, Gus. <laughs> go sit. Well, it was, I guess, what time? <laughs> right what, there. Yeah. What uh, year did you go like all in on video and freelance? Oh, man. This is the part of the of the podcast where I'm gonna say I do not I'm not great with l- years and time. Well, like and if like, 2020, like it was a little bit before 2020 then, but yeah, how much longer? Roughly, you don't like. Oh, uh, I would say maybe f- five years. Oh, really? I think so. Okay, Somewhere around there. Because that's how I all. I'm not gonna talk. That's <laughs> only how like I knew you as was yeah. that you were doing video and you were doing freelance. And we met as far as how we came to know Miguel is Alex and I lived in Louisville uh, for a year and in Southern Indiana for two years. And we had friends that used him for a project. Mm-hmm. And actually, I hadn't ever met Miguel or seen him. <laughs> I just had known that his name was Miguel and that he was a videographer. And we were at one of our friend's shows that was competing, and I. I walk up to Keone, shout out Keone, shout out Keone. <laughs> and was like, hi, I'm Sue, like, you must be Miguel. And he just looks at me and like, everyone starts laughing. And I'm like, what? I don't get what's funny. Like, I was just trying to be polite and like, introduce myself and like, you know, 
be yeah. nice and everyone's making <laughs> fun of me right now. And he was like, I'm not Miguel. I was like, oh, okay, sounds good. <laughs> I guess <laughs> F me, I don't know. I'm sorry, but uh, that was my first time meeting you. Wasn't really you, yeah. uh, but met you later on. <laughs> <laughs> Keone, yeah. So Keone and I did work together to bring the context all together. We did work together. We lived together as roommates at the time. So it was easy to like, you know, make that because I think a lot of people associated us as a unit at that point in time. Well, so. I also just had never seen yeah. his face. So yeah. I was just going off of the person holding the camera and someone is here to video. So that is how I, you know, connected those dots. Yeah. Um, and we didn't really do a ton of projects or much together before we kind of entered the partnership that we did in 2020, yeah. unless I'm mistaken. No, I think our first working relationship was like the first handful of exercise execution videos and just like YouTube videos that you guys needed. And yeah, that that was the beginning. I think I was I was freelance for a few years. So yeah, maybe that timeline makes sense, like four or five years mm -hmm. ago at this point. Um freelance. So I at that point in freelancing career, it was it was weddings, it was music videos, it was travel. Yeah, a you lot were of travel. Doing music videos yeah. too. Oh yeah. I mean, just stay involved in music as mm -hmm. much as I can and I knew a lot of still do. Yeah. A lot of friends, a lot of uh, a lot of connections still to this day, and um, I, I, I've stepped away from weddings. I'll take one every once in a blue moon if it makes sense. But if we were to get married again, would you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I definitely want to attend that. Yeah, and not okay, film it. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Um, but yeah, weddings. I stepped away from those for, a, uh, I just decided, you have to like do that a year in advance, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you book so far ahead. So I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. I need to get the word out. Uh, but stuck with, stuck with the fitness, stuck with music videos and just like freelance jobs. So I did a lot of traveling. Uh, I, I luckily was able to travel and work. And I, I've done a lot of projects that were just like, you know, like working with hotels, working with restaurants, working in di I mean, different countries doing freelance video and photo. So that's like, I'm so thankful and fortunate to be able to do that, mm -hmm. to make money and do what I love, but also like travel the world. Um, and afterwards, I think, yeah, how we end up connecting was mutual relationship, fitness community in the Louisville, Kentucky area. And you guys need you guys you guys committed to showing up on social and you needed help with that and i was we the guy needed big help we needed big big help and we were like this is the year to do it we're all yep. stuck kind of so let's <laughs> let's go for it um we'll have to i don't even remember what the exact first video actually it was at it was at khg we didn't do stuff at oh, our yeah. house yet yep. we rented khg after hours and brought all the lighting yep. and we got through like so many in one <laughs> go because we had it for like that amount of time and it was like where the lighting was set up it's like how many videos can we do in this area we were there for like a while i yeah. feel like that honestly kind of changed my perception of what our shooting now looks like <laughs> because I was like, ooh, each time we got to like get in there and get everything done. And it's like, we yeah. can split it up a little. Yeah. We don't have to do everything at once. Yeah, we structure it a lot yes. differently now. Yeah. Uh, which I'm thankful for because, I mean, it just makes, I mean, you're all schedule, like it makes everything easier just mm -hmm. to like break it down and and allow not so much pressure to like, I mean, you guys are just, you hold a lot in here, you mm -hmm. know, it's like hard to like nail that every single time. Like there's a crazy expectation. So just like, we yeah. have it fine tuned now. <laughs> and you know. you know, just energy throughout the videos yeah. as well <laughs> of having good flow and all that jazz. Let's but, talk about the glow up you guys oh, had. Oh gosh, <laughs> let's, my gosh. It has been, that's a thing of like the, some of the videos, they aren't bad. Like they're shot well, yeah. the audio's fine. We got rid of the ones that Miguel was gonna die if oh, those yeah. audios stayed up. There's um, a couple that just, Oh, yeah, well, that me. was a whole situation yeah. <laughs> of we didn't even know what we were walking into for filming. And it was like, <laughs> ah, we're just doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been quite the the change for us. Um, oh, what I was saying was the videos, they're not bad. It's great information, but it's like, I don't even look like that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we just spice it up. I'm looking a little bit better now. Um, and yeah. a little bit more well-spoken as well. Yeah, but. Alex... I mean, yeah, I love looking at the old photos you mm -hmm. guys and old videos too, but 
you guys just don't look. No. They don't look the same. We've yeah. aged a lot in two years, yeah. internally and externally. <laughs> let me tell you. 2020 to 2022, <laughs> my gosh. Um, but now that we're getting into current times, this is going to conclude this episode. Um, and we'll kind of dive into more when it's the three of us and being able to talk about the transition to working with us and what that whole process was and what this whole past year has been. But I definitely wanted you to get to know Miguel some. If you have more questions about any of his lives, then <laughs> leave them if you're watching on YouTube below. If you are watch are listening on another platform, then reach out to, to me on Instagram and ask the questions and we'll make sure that we get those answered because he lives a very interesting life and always keeps us on our toes. Um, so this is Miguel. He is the <laughs> bomb diggity and the reason all of these videos come to life as well as our podcast producer, since this is on podcast, David. Shout out to shout David. Shout out, David. We'll just finish up crucial, the shout outs. Like, crucial shout out to David. David is so crucial, so <laughs> important. So lots of shout outs, lots of love, as you can tell. Um, we'll definitely have to figure out something for meeting Brian and being oh, yeah. able to bring that in. <laughs> Maybe we need to get Julio so people can meet Julio, <laughs> um, do some videos. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But we got lots of fun planned coming into this next year. I'm excited um, for it. And I'm just so, so excited and thankful um, for the time that we have had this year. So yeah, the next podcast same. is going to be fun to yeah. be able to go through it all. Couldn't agree more. I'm I feel excited. Like I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> we might. It might go there. Yeah. But the three of us, I mean, we're, it's going to be fun. We're going to chop it up. And yes. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. Always have a hoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good deal. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Say bye. Say bye. Oh, bye. <laughs>